here are 10 easy ways to fail your exams. Obviously, I don't want you to fail your exams, so please listen to what I'm saying and then do the exact opposite. When you write your exams, you write it on a bit of paper, it then gets scanned and sent off to the examiner who will mark it. If your handwriting is so bad that they cannot read it, they will not be able to mark it and give you the points. Examiners have a lot to mark in a very short period of time. They do not have hours to spend trying to interpret what you've written. Tiny handwriting is the worst because it is nearly impossible to read. Your teachers, you might have got used to handwriting, but examiners haven't and they don't have time to. So please, a clear handwriting that can be read, that is a sensible size, that is clear and not messy. The second way to fail your exams is by not reading the question properly. Look at the command words. You can use a highlighter to highlight the command words or underline it, but for a described question, it is what it looks like. For an explained question, it is why. For an evaluate question, it is the good parts, the bad parts, your opinion and because. If you write a describe answer for an explained question, you haven't answered the question, you've not read the question, you're not getting the marks. Some people will write so much stuff and will just brain dump at a question, writing down everything they know about that topic or everything they think they know about that topic in any vague chance of getting the mark. If you write something right, if you write the perfectly correct answer, but then you write the opposite, which is wrong, you are not demonstrating to the examiners that you know what you're talking about and you're not going to get the marks. For example, if you write electrons are positive and electrons are negative, you have not told the examiner that you know what the answer is and they're not going to give you the marks. So please, just write the right answer. Don't try and hedge your bets by writing the opposite in hopes that you'll get the marks you won't. Lots of people will assume that the early content is the easy content. So the stuff we do at the beginning of year 12, the stuff we did at the beginning of year 9 or year 10 and have not revised it very much or assume it's just going to be in the easy questions. This is not true. Some of the stuff we did at the beginning is the fundamental basics for the rest of the course and can't be ignored during revision. So please revise everything, even the stuff we did really, really early on. When you have multiple choice questions or tick box questions and it says tick one or tick two, if you don't tick the right number of boxes, you're not going to get the marks. If you tick two boxes when it says select one, even if you selected the right one, you're not going to get the marks because you've ticked too many boxes. If it says tick two boxes and you've only ticked one box, well, that one might be right, but, you know, have a guess at the second one. If you leave any tick box questions blank, you're just throwing away marks. Have a go and at least guess at the answer to every single multiple choice question. There's no negative marking. They're not going to take marks off you if you get something wrong, which they did at university to me. But at least have a go at every single question. You might pick up those marks. As I mentioned in the first point, exams get scanned and sent off. So if you're doing a really, really long answer, really, really calculation, you run out of space. So you write the actual answer outside the box, right at the bottom. Chances are the examiner, the person marking it, won't actually see that. Please make sure you do all of your marking inside writing inside the box so the examiner can actually see it. Friction pens are awful. I know lots of you love them because you can rub them out but when they get heated up they disappear and part of the problem with exam papers being scanned and sent off is that the scanner heats up and then your work might actually disappear. So while you might have written a beautiful long essay in friction pen, when it gets put on the scanner, which might be hot after scanning lots and lots of documents, your work might actually disappear and a blank page gets scanned, scanned and sent through to the examiners. So please avoid friction pens at all cost. You might have revised the wrong content. Now, every single year, somebody turns up for a biology exam thinking it was chemistry and revised the wrong stuff. Or this year, you might have misinterpreted the advanced information. So please pay attention to what exam it is and what actually you need to revise for this exam. There are always stressful people outside the front of the exam hall who want to get in your head and plant doubts. Please avoid these negative people at all 
costs. You might be spending too long on a question. Very, very roughly, we want you to be working at one mark per minute. So if you have a multiple choice question, don't spend five minutes on it because it's not likely to be worth five marks. It's likely to be worth one mark. On the other side of that, if you have a 30 mark question, you're probably going to need to spend longer than five minutes working on it. So roughly one mark per question. If it is taking you longer than that, maybe leave the question and come back to it later after you've had a bit of a brain break and see if you can come back to it refreshed. Those are the 10 easiest ways to fail your exams. Hopefully now that you know how to fail your exams, then we can actually avoid doing those things, avoid using friction pens, writing the wrong content, letting negative people get in your head, all of those things, so that you can actually focus on revising properly and succeeding in your exams. You and me guys, we're gonna get through this every single step of the way. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. <laughs>